Habari. Salam alaikum. Saubona. Mulweni. And welcome to another edition of Front on Front. I'm your host, Sarah Onyango, and today we'll be highlighting the 25th anniversary of South Africa's democracy. And we're honored to welcome Her Excellency Sibongiseni Klamini Ntambo in the studio to discuss this milestone and related topics. But before we begin this conversation, let me just give you an extremely brief historical context. So in the fourth century, migrants from the north joined the indigenous San and Khoikhoi people in the southern part of the African continent. Then, starting in the 1480s, there are waves of European migration to the area. The Portuguese, the Dutch, the British, and then there are several wars and conflicts thereafter, which lead to Africans losing power and land to the European colonizers. In 1948, the policy of apartheid, separateness in Afrikaans, is adopted when the National Party takes power. In 1960, 70 black demonstrators are killed at Sharpeville and the ANC is banned. In 1964, ANC leader Nelson Mandela is sentenced to life imprisonment. In 1990, the ANC is unbanned and Mandela is released after 27 years in prison. In April 1994, the ANC wins the first multiracial elections. Mandela becomes president. A government of national unity is formed. South Africa's Commonwealth membership is restored. All sanctions are lifted and South Africa takes its seat in the UN General Assembly after a 20 year absence. That's just a very, very brief uh, context. But someone who knows more about uh, that wonderful country's history than I do is Her Excellency Sibongiseni Glamini Tambo. Welcome, Your Excellency. Thank you so much. Saubona. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll learn to say it right. <laughs> yes, yes. Good evening. So tell us uh, a bit about yourself. Um, like you said, my name is Bongseni Glamini Tambo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm from South Africa, of course. Mm -hmm. Grew up in KwaZulu Natal. Mm -hmm. uh, and I moved to Gauteng uh, more or less 15 years back. Mm -hmm. And before coming to Canada, I was in Gauteng uh, working um, in Johannesburg, of course. And I arrived in Canada in 2017, mm -hmm. actually in April, mm -hmm. and I was in um, I presented my credentials uh, in May, mm -hmm. the 2nd of May, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, so you've been here about two years. I've been here two years, yeah. yes, as you say, two mm -hmm. winters. Yes, yeah, two I've winters. been two winters, yeah, yes. So um, can you give us a sense of what it was like growing up in apartheid-era South Africa? What was that like? Um, it was a very, uh, for black people, it was mm -hmm. a very difficult period. Um, it was, um, in, in one of um, the talks that I had, I indicated that it was just uh, chaos and madness. Mm -hmm. um, the apartheid system uh, was meant to discriminate against black people. Um, the apartheid system, um, was about uh, more than 40 mm -hmm. years. Yeah. However, if you look at the racism, discrimination, mm -hmm. that one was even more than 360 some old. Well, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, w with, with the apartheid system, it was just a cruel system that was meant to feather uh, discriminate when it comes to education, when mm -hmm. it came to the economy, mm -hmm. when it came to land grabs. It, 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 it was just meant to make a black person feel inferior mm -hmm. and um, oppressed mm -hmm. uh, by a minority race. Mm -hmm. So growing up in the apartheid system uh, for a black child was very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Now, if for instance, you were, look, you were to look at the issue of um, education, we had what we call Bantu education, which mm -hmm. was a system that was meant 
to uh, educate. What does Bantu mean? Ban Bantu is from Umuntu, a person. Oh, okay. Um, but it was used as a derogatory term to refer to black people. Mm -hmm. um, so they came up with a system they called Bantu education, which means it was only meant for black people. Mm -hmm. It was so inferior, so inferior, there were no resources mm -hmm. that were put into the Bantu education system. So you grew up in South Africa, and so you would have grown up under the apartheid system. Can you tell our audience, give, give them a sense of what that was like for a black person, specifically? Okay. That was a very difficult, uh, dark period in our history. It's a history that we do not want to be repeated. Mm -hmm. More so because um, it was a minority race that was oppressing the majority. And this minority race, where they came to South Africa and they were oppressing the citizens of the country. The apartheid system uh, was meant to really oppress the black person. Uh, to make the black person not uh, grow in terms of, of, of anything. The mm -hmm. economy, not take part in the economy. Mm -hmm. um, the education system that mm -hmm. was uh, introduced, the Bantu education system, mm -hmm. also was meant to uh, have black people not be, um, to be, to, the system was, was, was meant for black people not to be anything right. beyond like, yeah. um, being garden yeah. labor. boys, labor, yeah. and Manual, uh, for labor. women mm -hmm. um, to be domestic workers, to mm -hmm. be able to speak to their bosses. Mm -hmm. So that's how bad it was. Mm -hmm. And if you look at um, the streets at that time, because uh, people were protesting against the system of mm -hmm. apartheid. Mm -hmm. So the streets, you will find that there were tanks in the streets. Mm -hmm. There were police in the streets. Our people were killed mm -hmm. uh, left, right, and center. So it was a police state, yes. in fact. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. You know, I, I, I grew up in my mind thinking that this is what is happening in all other countries. Really? I wow. thought it was normal for um, the security system of a country mm -hmm. to um, forcibly mm -hmm. use violence mm -hmm. against the population. Mm -hmm. And yet it was happening in our country and it was only happening to one race. Mm -hmm. And of course race. you would have thought that it was just in South Africa because everything was state controlled if what the media heard, was state saw. control, mm -hmm. there was just a blackout when it mm -hmm. comes to the media, such that we didn't know that mm -hmm. outside South Africa, mm -hmm. there were countries mm -hmm. that were literally fighting for us. Mm -hmm. For instance, Canada. Yeah. You know, w w with Canada, the, you had um, leaders like Brian Maroney, mm -hmm. who took a stand in the international community who led the international community mm -hmm. to fight for us. Mm -hmm. It is such leaders who were able to go to the Commonwealth and make sure that there are sanctions in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And if it was not for leaders like that, mm -hmm we wouldn't be where we are today. Mm -hmm. And of course there was uh, Joe Clark as well. Yes, and yes, it's worth yes, mentioning yes, that yes, both of yes, them were conservative yes, the prime yes, ministers yes, yes, yes. of Canada. Yes. And just I'll just give the audience a sense of the oppression. You had pass laws. Tell us about the pass laws. Oh my goodness. Um, the pass laws were meant to um, control the movement of people, of mm -hmm. black people. Mm -hmm. It was only black people mm -hmm. uh, who had to produce passes. Mm -hmm. um, when you want to go from one area to the next, you had to produce a pass. Mm -hmm. Those were called the pass laws. But it became even worse when they wanted to introduce, initially they were meant for men, black men. 
but then they wanted to introduce them to women as to well, women that as women well. must also carry uh, these passes. Um, as you know, in 1956, women of all races, now this thing about pass laws, it was not just black women. For the first time in South Africa, we had women of all races mm -hmm. marching to the union buildings. That was about 20,000 women who marched and they were singing a uh, struggle song, one, mm -hmm. of, one, one of the, of, of, of the um, war cries, for instance, mm -hmm. what in Dabafazi, what in Bogoto, which means you strike a woman, you strike a rock. Yeah. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. march up until this day, on the 8th of August, we celebrate that march. Mm -hmm. Because it was because of that march mm -hmm. that government then, you know, um, started thinking differently. Mm -hmm. But what we appreciate more than anything is that women stood together. Mm -hmm. Black, white, yellow, mm -hmm. they marched mm -hmm. about 20,000. So August 8th in South Africa is, is National Women's, Women's Day, Day, not yes. March 8th. August no, day August in honor because of that. The, uh, in honor of, 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 of the march. But there were also other protest movements, children and young people. Tell us about yes. 76. 1976, remember I, I spoke a little bit about uh, the Bantu education system. Mm -hmm. Now the government uh, had introduced Africans to be used at schools. Mm -hmm. Everything was taught in Africans. I mean, honestly, um, Africans, we hardly knew Africans. And Africans for us was the language of the oppressor. Of course. So mm -hmm. children uh, marched to the streets to, pro to protest against uh, the Bantu education and for the use of Africans. Unfortunately, children, young children, mm -hmm. young children were mm -hmm. shot at. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you use live fire mm -hmm. on children? Yeah. So that's where you see that iconic um, yeah. picture of uh, the first young child mm -hmm. who died mm -hmm. on that day. And there's it, the Peterson Museum now. Yes, 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 in, 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 in Soweto, when you go to, to the Hector Peterson, mm -hmm. when you go to Soweto, mm -hmm. um, in um, yes, mm -hmm. like street, so everybody was one. involved in the struggle. There was the the children in seventy six, the women in fifty six, women in in in, in, mm -hmm. in and yeah. then obviously the ANC. Uh, yes, yes, were yes, yes, yes. Fighting, um, but you, they had the military wing, so using yes. military might to to overcome. And then the people outside, the South Africans outside South Africa. The Did you hear about them? Yes, we had quite a number of people who were exiled, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. The one thing I can think uh, regarding our African countries is that the people who were exiled, mm -hmm. they made Africa their home. Mm -hmm. And they were so welcomed mm -hmm. in these countries mm -hmm. because they couldn't stay in South Africa. They had to try and mobilize outside uh, mm -hmm. South Africa. We have so many African countries. Mm -hmm. The frontline states, Zambia, yes. Zimbabwe, yes. Tanzania, Tanzania, Guinea, even, who, who Libya. Us. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So they made Africa mm -hmm. their home. We are forever grateful for those countries. So let's skip to 1990, February 1990. Where were you? when Nelson Mandela was released. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Everybody knows in South Africa, whoever was there in 1990, mm -hmm. they will remember that day. That was such a beautiful day. I was a young mother, mm -hmm. so I was not in, <laughs> in the nick of things. I yeah. was at home with a group of friends. We were excited. We were watching TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he came out with uh, Winnie Mandela, you know. This year. The only thing, the tears that mm -hmm. were flowing in our eyes, we were like, you know, this is the man who was jailed for 27 years. Mm -hmm. 27 years. Mm -hmm. On an island, on top of that. On an island. Very little human contact. Yeah. And you are thinking this man fought for us. Mm -hmm. We never thought this day would come. Mm -hmm. And there he was. Mm -hmm. You know, 
So it's one day and the crowds, we watch in TV, the crowds, the excitement. Mm -hmm. I mean, although I was watching TV, you could already hear mm -hmm. in the background, mm -hmm. people were happy. There, so there was a lot of excitement here too, it, believe me. It, is it? So let's skip <laughs> yeah. from 1990 to 1994. The first elections, the first democratic elections. Were you able to vote in that election? I tell you. I was working, oh. uh, working, no, 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 working in, in, in the voting station, wow. <laughs> election officer. So what was, yes. what was the ambiance <laughs> like? My goodness, it was so exciting. We worked, um, how many hours? Oh, we didn't sleep. We were very excited because for the first time, mm -hmm. as a black person, I could cast my voice in my country mm -hmm. and decide who I wanted to govern the country. So the long, the queues, everybody was very excited. The queues, the winding queues, people waiting, mm -hmm. they didn't care. No matter what age, I remember the elderly, the people elderly, being brought the, we, by they wheelbarrows. Did, yes, yeah. they didn't care, they waited, yeah. mm -hmm. they waited. Mm -hmm. And, you know, casting that vote, mm -hmm. casting that vote was everything we had been uh, waiting for. Mm -hmm. So it is a day. And then the swearing in. The inauguration, yes, the oh, swearing Madiba. in. My goodness, that was something else. We have had so many proud memo moments mm -hmm. uh, for my country. Mm -hmm. But that's one, swearing in our first black, black president. president. Yeah, that was amazing. And so you've democratically had elected, democratically I must elected emphasize. for sure. So you've had other milestones in these twenty-five years. Uh, the World Cup, the first <laughs> African country <laughs> to host the yes, FIFA and that's when it, Men's it, World it, Cup. Yes, of and, soccer. And, and, yes, we have quite a number of of milestones. I must say, sport has been one area where, which has brought cricket. us again. Yes, cricket, mm -hmm. the World Cup, which has brought. South Africa together. Mm -hmm. Somehow we, we still are divided uh, in terms of race. We still know mm -hmm. black, white, and but when it comes to sport, mm -hmm. that is one area that brings us together so, in South Africa. So everybody behind the spring Whether box? Whether it's cricket or spring Rugby, board or Bafana yeah. Bafana. Bafana the soccer. <laughs> yes. Although we're losing these yes. days. <laughs> but somehow yeah. we managed to come together mm. as a country. Out of national pride. Yes, out of national pride. Mm -hmm. And the excitement mm -hmm. uh, when we win, the, the, the excitement, it's just a beautiful country. So you, there have been, okay, so you've had the sports milestones, the and World Cricket, uh, the yes. win, where Madiba presented yes, the trophy. Yes, yes. Uh, you've had the World Cup, etc. But you've also had economic Adam. milestones, like bricks. Yes, we... <sighs> For a very, very long time, mm -hmm. uh, South Africa was um, not taking part mm -hmm. in these formations. Mm -hmm. BRICS is one uh, formation that, as South Africa, we have uh, also joined. For mm -hmm. us, it's such a milestone because so you look at these countries yeah, yeah. and we look at uh, working together. Mm -hmm to try and improve mm -hmm. the economies in this country. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is one uh, area that uh, also is a milestone for us. Mm -hmm. um, for Africa. the benefit of our uh, audience, I'll just say BRICS Bri is Brazil, Brazil Russia, Russia, India, China, China and South, South Africa. Africa. Yes, yes, right. yes, mm -hmm. yes. One of the other milestones you're asking me about, mm -hmm. milestones, I'm yes. just excited. I must mention our constitution. The constitution, absolutely. We have such a brilliant constitution mm -hmm. that for the first time it recognizes and it respects the rights of people, regardless of your color, your gender. It respects the rights of women. It respects the rights of children. It recognizes human rights. Mm -hmm. It is the law. It is the supreme law of the country. So for the first time in South Africa, we had a constitution and we have a constitution that we are so proud of. Mm -hmm. 
And your country, speaking of justice and law, your country went through the exercise of the truth and reconciliation uh, exercise, which I yes. think our First Nations were and inspired by the, yeah. to have our own yes. truth and reconciliation. The truth and reconciliation was chaired by uh, Bishop Tutu. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was one platform where we wanted to bring uh, these separate races. I mean, the, before there was the oppressor and the oppressed. And there were so many atrocities mm -hmm. uh, that took place during the apartheid uh, system. So it was a platform or a forum which was meant to bring the victims mm -hmm. and the perpetrators to say, I mean, like the name truth and reconciliation, what is the truth? What happened? Mm -hmm. Who did what? Mm -hmm. To whom? Mm -hmm. And why? And it was meant to reconcile so the victims uh, or the families of the victims to hear what happened to their loved ones. Remember, there are still people who are mm -hmm. unaccounted for. Exactly. They yeah. were killings. Missing. People mm -hmm. were thrown into rivers uh, infested with crocodiles. They were, uh, people were shot at. Um, so people wanted to know what happened. People were thrown out of, of, of prison, mm -hmm. high buildings and, and all those things. They wanted to know the truth. What happened to, you know, uh, the loved ones? The unfortunate thing is that um, some people did not get to know what happened to their loved ones because uh, not everyone was willing to tell the truth, the mm -hmm. whole truth and nothing else but the truth. Mm -hmm. Uh, such that the, 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 the healing process did not, or the commission did not fully mm -hmm. yeah. realize mm -hmm. its objective. Mm -hmm. um, there are still a number of questions that come up. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing that I can, you, you mentioned that Canada also is looking at uh, truth and reconciliation. It is only possible if the perpetrator is willing to tell the truth. Yeah. It is only possible for me to heal if I know what happened. Mm -hmm. Don't try and package the truth and think this is what I want to hear. I want to hear the truth for me to grieve, mm -hmm. so for me to go through the emotions mm -hmm. and for me to close the chapter. Mm -hmm. But if you don't tell me the truth, how do I grieve? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's... How, how do I heal? Yeah. So uh, in some cases, mm -hmm. the, the truth, the whole truth yeah. was not told. Yeah, so it's, so it's still uh, it, yeah. a work in progress, it, it, so it, to speak. Yeah, the, the unfortunate thing with Even though it's, it's closed officially, but it's it, it, a work it, in progress. Yes. The mm -hmm. unfortunate thing about South Africa, one thing that I can tell you now, um, everyone was against apartheid today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But who came up with apartheid? That's the question. Who came up? Who yeah. Up, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it was a system that benefited yes, a group. Yes. That yes, continues yes, to benefit. Yes. And still own a lot of the land. Mm -hmm. And no one is taking responsibility exactly. of, of the system. When yeah. You're talking about the land. Yes. Um, That's one of the, the challenges. 80% of yeah. the land today mm -hmm. is in the, way in the hands of 20%. Wow. Mm hmm that is the white minority. Mm -hmm. Blacks were, in terms of the 1913 Land Act, mm -hmm. they were pushed into um, areas where there are no, mm -hmm. not even known mineral deposits. Yeah. Uh, infertile. Infertile completely. land mm -hmm. where you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, mountainous places mm -hmm. and land was just taken away from forcefully mm -hmm. taken away from them yeah we need the land yeah. I mean it what is happening is unsustainable yeah it's the 80 percent of the population that is without land yeah and then and if, if you yeah. do not have land yeah you can't even begin to think I want to farm mm -hmm. where do you farm exactly how do you farm yeah if you do not have land. Mm -hmm. we've, talked, we've talked about what's to celebrate about South Africa, the constitution, the milestone in, in sports, its membership in you know, the BRICS community. 
What are the challenges that remain? Can you just quickly tell us? We still have um, challenges of poverty, mm -hmm. inequality, mm -hmm. uh, inequality, and unemployment. Mm -hmm. Uh, we still have uh, people, especially in the rural areas, who are still going through challenges uh, in terms of poverty, mm -hmm. uh, especially women mm -hmm. who are left to take care of the children when the husbands are away working very far. Mm -hmm. uh, we also still have uh, racial divisions in the mm -hmm. country. We still have to uh, try and bring the country together, but we are working on that. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to, um, recently our country was uh, riddled with a lot of, um, you know... Uh, Unrest? No, it had to do with the economy, mm -hmm. whereby uh, oh, I, I think we, we, yeah. we went through um, a difficult period, mm -hmm. and I think we are now mm -hmm. um, turning the corner. Yeah. We have a new president, mm -hmm. as you would know, Cyril Ramaphosa, mm -hmm. and we are looking at issues of corruption right now. Uh, we are addressing whatever um, um, they have been areas mm -hmm. where there have been corrupt activities. Mm -hmm. So we are addressing that. But mm -hmm. also you must remember that there is uh, a corruptee and there is the corruptor. a corruptor. <laughs> yeah. So regardless of where they are, whether they're in the West or East, mm -hmm. we are going after them. We are going after everyone. So those are some of the challenges that are currently facing uh, the, the, the country right now. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for coming in to talk to us about uh, this is a milestone, the 25th anniversary of uh, the multiracial democracy in South Africa. And uh, hopefully a lot of our viewers will want to go visit and see all the beautiful things there are to see and enjoy about South Africa. I hope you enjoyed uh, today's program. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. So please write us and tell us what you thought. And stay tuned for more coverage of events and uh, people from the African and Caribbean community right here in the nation's capital, Kwaheri, and bye for now.